All right, guys, today we are going to learn all about recipe conversions. What I need you to do is flip to page 40 of your class workbook. It's going to be a yellow sheet that looks like this, molasses sugar cookies. You'll have a table at the top and instructions for the recipe down below. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Recipe conversions. We're going to change a recipe from one amount to another amount. That is what recipe conversions means. So. What I want you to do is write this on the bottom of your page 40, these four rules. So number one, you're going to find your conversion factor. A conversion factor is your desired yield over your original yield, or another way of saying this, is your want over what you have. Number two, you want to keep everything in fraction form. It's a lot easier to multiply whole numbers rather than decimals. All right, so much easier if you're going to multiply one half versus 0.5. Okay, and uh, multiply all of your ingredients. When we convert a recipe, make sure that you do all of the ingredients. If you forget one, your recipe will be off. And number four, simplify down to a measurable amount, meaning that if you get one eighth of a cup, I want you to tell me what one eighth of a cup is because we don't have an eighth of a cup measuring tool. A few things that I really want to go over. How do we multiply fractions? We are going to go straight across. So in this example, three-fourths times two-thirds. You're going to take your three times two over four times three. So really when we're multiplying straight across, this is what it looks like in the math portion. So we're going to go three times two over four times three. That equals out to be 6 twelfths. So how do we simplify? What you're going to do is you're going to find a common factor. This is just something that both the top and the bottom have in common, okay? Meaning that they can both be divided by it. In our example, we can see that both can be divided by 2. So really, we're going to take that 6 twelfths and we're going to just put it over each other. 6 divided by 2 over 12 divided by 2. That equals 3 over 6. Now, when we look at this 3 over 6, we can see that it's not a measurable yield. Excuse me. I don't have a sixth cup. All right. So what we're going to have to do is simplify even further. Now, looking at this, we can both see that the common factor is 3. They are both divisible by 3. So we're just going to come down here, take our 3 sixths equals 3 divided by 3 divided by 6 divided by 3. So 3 over 3 over 6 divided by 3 equals 1 third. That is a measurable yield. So that is an acceptable answer. What about if you have a whole number? What I want you to do is convert that whole number to a fraction. You're just going to put it over 1. So 2 equals 2 over 1. If this were a 1, it would be 1 over 1. If this were a 3, it would be a 3 over 1. You just put your whole number over one. It's that simple. What about if you have a whole number and a fraction, also known as a mixed number? You're going to create something known as an improper fraction. So you will multiply the whole number by the denominator, so the bottom number, and add it to the numerator. Okay, think of this as splitting that whole number into pieces and then adding it together to create a fraction. So if we've got our two and one fourth here, we're going to go 2 times 4 equals 8 plus 1 equals 9. All right, so we're going to go ahead and practice some. So on your page 40 in your molasses sugar cookie notes, we're going to work on this. So number one, let's go ahead and start in blue for our rules. And remember, you should have this written down. We are going to find our conversion factor, okay? Remember that a conversion factor is the recipe yield that we want over the recipe yield that we already have, okay? So let's go ahead and take our two dozen recipe and create a three dozen recipe with it. So our conversion factor for this example is the recipe yield that we want, which is three dozen cookies over the recipe yield that we already have, which is two dozen cookies. So this is the conversion factor that we're going to work with for this um, example. Number two, we're going to keep it in fraction form. The reason why I want to really stress this is because when you're multiplying in kitchen math, 
you're going to have, for example, one half of a cup. We could go 0.5 times 1.5. Is that an easy problem to do in our head? Maybe for some of us. I am more of a visual, a visual person, so the fraction form really helps me. So instead of seeing 0.5 over 1.5, what I would see is 1 half times 3 over 2, just like that. And so I can really actually see the math, and that helps me as someone who's a more visual person. I'm not the best at math, but I can do conversions pretty easily because of this um, system that I've created. Number three, we want to multiply all the way down. The reason why we multiply all the way down is because say you forget one ingredient and it happens to be like your baking soda. Your baking soda is what's going to make those uh, cookies rise. So if you convert from a recipe of two dozen cookies to three dozen cookies and you're using the baking soda amount for the two dozen cookies, your cookies are going to be flat as pancakes. So you really need to remember to multiply all the way down so you get the correct amount for each ingredient. And lastly, um, but certainly not least, is that we always simplify to a measurable yield, okay? The reason why it has to be a measurable yield is because sometimes you're going to get something like one-eighth of a cup. I do not have a one-eighth of a cup, okay? I don't have that tool, so I need to know what one-eighth of a cup actually equals. And one-eighth of a cup is going to equal two tablespoons. And write this down right here. You need to write this down because we're going to be working with this one-eighth of a cup quite often with um, this example. So you need to know what one-eighth of a cup equals. It equals two tablespoons. All right, let's go ahead and start. So our conversion factor equals three over two. We're going to use this conversion factor the whole way down our recipe. This is not going to change. So our first ingredient is sugar, and we have one cup of a sugar that we need to multiply by our conversion factor. What we're going to do is just put that over one. And remember, when we go ahead and um, when we measure, when we multiply fractions, we just go straight across, just like that. So one times three over one times two and we're gonna get three over two, okay? Now, this is um, the part where we need to simplify to a measurable yield. We've already kept it in fraction form, we've found our conversion factor, we're gonna make sure that we go all the way down, but we need to simplify to that measurable yield. So, the way that we simplify a fraction is really very simple. All you're gonna do is ask yourself, how many times does this bottom number go into the top number? That's all you have to do. So um, what we're going to do is say 2 probably goes into 3 one time, right? And there's one half left. There's a one piece left because if we think about this as a piece of, like we split our, I don't know, our 3 th uh, seconds into a section, we're going to see this is our half. This is the one and this is the two of the one half, all right? But we're going to have a little extra left, and that's going to be our one, okay? Because we've got one, two, three, and it's part of our half. So we're going to have one and a half cups left, and that will be our answer for our sugar. All right, let's go ahead and go to our shortening. Our shortening is three-fourths of a cup, and we're going to multiply that by our conversion factor that's not going to change so three times three over four times two we get nine eighths we simplify the same way we ask ourselves how many times does that bottom number go into our top number and we're going to get one and one eighth left okay remember one eighth of a cup and you should have this written down at the bottom of your notes equals two tablespoons okay make sure you have that written down so our true answer here, because we want a measurable yield, we always do measurable yield, is one cup plus two tablespoons. That's the answer right here that you should have for your shortening. Okay, so moving on, 
we're going to do one half of a cup of molasses. So it's the same process, one half a cup times our 3 over 2, our conversion factor, and we get 3 fourths. Oh, that's so nice. We don't even have to change anything. We can just write it all the way down. Okay, next one is our one egg. We already did this problem, so I'm not going to go through and do it again. We did it up here. Remember, 1, we put it over a whole number. We multiply it by our conversion factor, 3 over 2. That equals 3 over 2. We simplify down. So we ask ourselves, how many times does the bottom number go into the top number? And is there anything left? And we get one and a half. How do you suppose that we measure that half egg? It's really easy. We're just going to go ahead and crack an egg into a bowl, whisk it together. We can use a fork or a whisk. And then we'll measure out two tablespoons because four tablespoons equals one whole egg. All right, next thing is our flour. And we have a mixed number. It's two and one fourth. Okay, so how do we get this to be an improper fraction? We're going to multiply our whole number by our denominator, okay? And then we'll add it to our numerator. So 2 times 4 equals 8 plus 1 equals 9. And then we put it over our denominator again to get that fraction form. So 9 over 4, that would be our answer here. And then we multiply it by our conversion factor, just like we always do. Multiply straight across. 9 times 3 equals 27 over 8, okay? And then we simplify. Ask ourselves, how many times does this bottom number go into our top number? And we're going to go ahead and get 3 and 3 eighths left, okay? So because 27 divided by 8 equals 3 plus 3 remainders, okay? So what we're going to do here, because we have our 3 eighths, we have that 3 eighths problem. We, we can't measure that. We can measure our 3 cups. Our 3 cups is fine, but we can't measure this. So what we're going to do is we are going to ask ourselves, how many tablespoons go into 1 eighth of a cup? 2 tablespoons. Okay, so all you're going to do is take your 3 and multiply it by your 2 to get your total tablespoons, and you're going to get 6. So 6 tablespoons. So you could, you could write 3 cups plus 6 tablespoons. That could be your answer. But because you are a human and humans make mistakes, you could miss count while measuring, you could accidentally measure one too much or one too little and then you wouldn't have the right amount so we always go to the largest measurable amount meaning that if i have four tablespoons written down on my recipe i know i know that four tablespoons equals one fourth of a cup and i'm going to use the one fourth cup because i am a human and i make mistakes so i'm going to instead go to the largest measurable amount so here with our six tablespoons, we need to convert it to the largest measurable amount. I've already given you a piece of the puzzle here with the four tablespoons, okay? So I, I know that a fourth of a cup equals four tablespoons, so I'm going to take my six tablespoons and minus my four tablespoons and get a remainder of two tablespoons. But this four tablespoons that came out of that six tablespoons now is a fourth of a cup. So my answer here would be three cups plus one fourth cup plus two tablespoons. That would be my answer for my flour, okay? I know it seems tedious, but this is the best way to measure that flour. All right, moving on from flour, we have our baking soda and it's two teaspoons. Remember that when we have a whole number, we're gonna put it over one and then we multiply it by our conversion factor and we're going to get 6 over 2. We'll simplify this down. This is really easy. Both the top and the bottom are divisible by 2. And we get 3. 3 teaspoons. However, we always go to the largest, the largest um, measurable amount. And 3 teaspoons equals 1 tablespoon. So that would be our answer here. Okay. Our spices, cinnamon, cloves, and ginger, they are all 
one teaspoon. We've already done one, so you should know that our answer is 1.5 teaspoons here, okay? If you're confused on how to do that, just look up here at this math right here, the very first thing that we did. All right, guys, that's it for converting a recipe. What I need you to do is complete page 40, okay? What I want you to do is figure out the four dozen, the five dozen, and the one dozen recipes here. So that's what your assignment for page 40 is. And then when you're finished with that one, what I'm gonna have you do is page 42, okay? This is our pecan sandies. What you'll do is you'll adjust that recipe to a more measurable yield, meaning that our first ingredient here is 32 tablespoons of butter, okay? 32 tablespoons of butter. We need to adjust that because nobody wants to measure out 32 tablespoons of butter, right? People just don't. So we need to figure out how many cups 32 tablespoons of butter has in it. And then when you're finished with that, you're going to divide that amount in half, all right? And you'll do that for the whole page. Once you're finished with page 42, you'll move on to page 43, okay? And page 43 is very simple. It's just like um, page 40, where you're just going to do the conversion factor. And then when you're finished, you're gonna do page 44, which is a Muddy Buddy recipe. You're gonna find a more measurable yield like you did up here in 42, and then you'll divide it in half. All right, guys, so that's it for your assignments for today. Okay, work on your recipe conversions. You've got page 40, page 42, page 43, and page 44. All right, so work on these. If you've got questions, email me, reach out. I'm happy to help. Okay, that's it.